The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. The people stayed there before the cross watching Jesus. As for the leaders, they jeered at him. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too. And when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him. Are you not the Christ? he said. Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? he said. You got the same sentence as he did. But in our case, we deserved it. We are paying for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Indeed, I promise you, he replied, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Lord Jesus Christ. We have come to the end of the liturgical year and we are celebrating the feast of Jesus Christ, the Universal King. My brothers and sisters, it's not simply a memorial for us to think about because as usual at the end of the year this is the feast that we celebrate we come and we acknowledge Jesus as King and then we go back the question is that we Jesus is the King the universal King and by the virtue of our baptism we were grafted unto him by virtue of our baptism we were given a threefold role remember that we are priests prophets and kings the man here today dying on the cross said remember me when you come into your kingdom so this dying man knows that he is going to an eternal kingdom where Jesus is the king, he is the savior, the Messiah. We must know the story from the very beginning. God chose a people from, for himself and he brought them into the promised land. From the very beginning, God was their savior. God was their king. God fought all their battles. When they came into the promised land, there were other foreigners and they could not live in peace because they were always attacked and they wanted to be like the other nation so that they could pr protect themselves and they asked for a king. They rejected Yahweh as their king, the one who fought their battles and they wanted a human king. And rightly, God said, if you want a king, I will give you a king. And that's what we hear in the first reading. Samuel was chosen as king, and from there, the Lord prepared from his line, the Messiah would come. And who is the Messiah? Yahweh, God, sends his own son, who is the king. Because none of the kings were able to rule the way that you can enjoy peace and justice earthly kingdoms come earthly kings come they go but this is an eternal kingdom so here we have Jesus who has come as king 
and he had to empty himself. How can God reveal himself to you when we can perish seeing God face to face? He comes in all human weakness, born in a stable. That's our king. Remember, from the very beginning, the three magi, when they came to visit Jesus, what did they bring to him? Myrrh, Francis, Franciscans and gold, telling us from the very beginning that he's a king and he's a prophet, that he has to die for the sins of mankind and rise again. A king who was born in a stable, the king who was baptized in the river Jordan, standing shoulder to shoulder with sinners. And finally a king who went about preaching. He says, the spirit is upon me. The Lord has sent me to proclaim the year of favor, to set the downtrodden free, to make the lame walk. So we knew his ministry. A king who was born in utter poverty, grew up, gave us the good news, and finally he died between two thieves to save us from sin. So this is the kingdom that he came to establish. It's a kingdom where righteousness, peace, and justice in the Holy Spirit so what kingdom are we talking about? Righteousness, peace, joy, and justice. This is the kingdom that he established. And as long as we have the Holy Spirit within us by virtue of our baptism, and as, as, as long as we work towards righteousness, justice, peace, and joy, then we are establishing the kingdom here on earth. And Jesus is the beginning and is the end. So do not forget your identity, my brothers and sisters. I would ask myself today, I am a king. How am I a king today? Jesus is the bridegroom of the church, isn't it? And I am married to Christ. So am I a bride? You said a bride is female, isn't it? Am I a bride? Yes, I am a bride because I'm married to Christ. So whether you're male or female, there's no male or female in the kingdom of God. There's no marriage in the kingdom of God. We are all married to Christ. And therefore, we are one with Jesus, one with God in that kingdom. So how do we exercise our kingship? Very important exercise of kinship. I know that as families, parents, you're doing the best you can for your family. Parents, you're slogging for the children to send them to universities, to have good education and so on. You're doing your part. Right? But whatever you do, do it with love. Because Jesus came to serve. Remember when... At the Last Supper, when he sat there and he washed the feet of the disciples and he went back to the table, he says, if you recognize me as your Master and Lord, then do what I did, wash one another's feet. I came not to serve, I came not to be served, but to serve. So it is, what kind of kingship is Jesus' kingship? He is a servant king. So as long as we are able to serve with love, mercy, then we are exercising our kingship. Do not forget that. As long as you are able to preach the good news to others, to share about the goodness, to share the story how God is working in your life, when you speak the truth, when you share the scriptures, you are a prophet. As long as you are partaking in the worship, you're able to sing and participate in the liturgy, you are exercising your priesthood. So remember, 
we are part of Christ and today what we are celebrating is the kingship everything begins and ends with him it's very important learn how to exercise mercy and forgiveness as Jesus was dying on the cross yes he came to give life for us sinners and even at the point of dying he was still able to forgive so forgive one another do not hold hurts grudges in your hearts God came to set us free always look at the cross and what are the last words that he spoke father forgive them what for they do not know what they do and you will be set free and you're exercising your kingship remembering others too that they too should enter into the kingdom remembering your destiny that you are walking here on a journey and one day you will share and enter into his kingdom remember that as you enter into that kingdom always talk to you remember of your enemy or neighbor who needs to arrive to the same destination to that eternal kingdom you have to bring someone to you into heaven isn't it all of us as we journey together we are responsible for one another so that all of us will enable be enabled enlightened and empowered to enter into that kingdom and God has given us all kinds of gifts and we are part of one community remember that's why we come to worship as one community hopefully today as we come to the end of the liturgical year we'll always remember that we have a king and that king must be the king in our hearts if you got other priorities in your life and that's most important if it is money fame and you put Jesus secondary then you will be a loser because just now I heard from someone sharing God has blessed me with everything oh Lord everything but why is it that I do not want to go to church can you take Jesus for granted but Jesus will wait for us he's our king a king who is merciful who is loving who is forgiving but also remember he is the judge remember the last judgment those who have involved involved in corporal and spiritual works of mercy these are the ones who will enter the kingdom of God those who have taken everything for granted you know yes you are doing all these things you are charitable you are doing your spiritual works but you do not come to church and you do not participate in the Eucharist which is the source the summit and the source of our life then everything makes comes to nothing so let us remember let us at least now that COVID is over everything is going to come back to normal after this next year make sure they all come back to church and especially those from the universities here are sitting here make sure you don't go and marry get married outside your faith and this is happening in so many people's life even with adults even with youths do not lose your faith faith is a gift from god your faith hope and charity these are the three gifts theological gifts from god which you have to protect parents you have received this gift and you have received your ministry don't forget your identity as priest prophet and king and jesus who has called us will be faithful right to the end keep persevering in who we are called to be and who we are supposed to become another christ for the world